Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 180 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it yeah so i am putting this zevia energy drink to the test today why i'm exhausted yeah it has been a very busy tiring week i'm gonna just try to like stay in the couch and not just like roll out of it and onto <laughs> the floor like it's been a good week but it's just been just so busy. Yeah. And I, I hate when people say that, right? Like, I'm busy. Well, who isn't busy? But it was legitimately, like, pretty full. I don't think we had, like, an hour of downtime this week. Well, you had, your mom got her cataract surgery. She did. And she did get to go to the Rand Eye Institute, which, hey, if you're thinking about getting something done with your eyes, go, go there. Go that place. It was, like, the Disney World of eye centers. I mean, they had... Like, just anything you can think of. It was, like, totally decked out. They, each floor had its own little, like, museum. Wow. They had, like, a little museum of, like, eye doctors through history. It was it was crazy. I thought it was funny when she started sending me pictures of her with the doctor. Yeah, that was odd. I guess, I guess he's famous in his circle, Mr. Rand. Or Dr. Rand, sorry. And, um... And so, yeah, they they first asked her, do you want to televise your eye surgery? And she was okay. like, um, no. They did give her a DVD, though, if she wants to watch it at home sometime later. So you want to watch, like, somebody working on your eyes. Yeah, it, that was strange, but okay. I mean, at least you have confidence that this guy doesn't think he's going to screw up, right? Because, I mean, he's not worried about malpractice. He's telling you right. like tape this thing here's a video of me doing everything exactly so i mean that instantly boosted confidence but then he said well do you want a picture with me so mom was like well i don't want to be mean and say like not not not, not really, really not really feeling like jc penny portrait studio today but so she was like um sure so the picture she got back i can't even show it because it'll like embarrass her too hard but he's in it looking great like hey <laughs> and she's like, because she's already been like under Knocked anesthesia, then, yeah. right? So she she looks drunk. I mean, like straight up drunk. So it's like, what are you even gonna do with this picture? I imagine every one of these patient pictures comes out like that, right? Because right. you're under, you know, the influence of drugos. So uh, yeah, I guess Christmas card. I guess that would be the Christmas card this year. That would be a good Christmas card. Yeah, like. <laughs> Yeah, so you had that, and then Rachel, like, had to keep going over to her mom's house, like, every couple of hours, like, there's alarms going off all day long, because you had to go and, like, make sure she's putting her drops in. Well, and, you're so she afraid. she can't see anything, so she can't see the drops. And no, and I was, I mean, let me just say, it is a privilege to have a mother, still, and to be able to be close enough that I can check on her as she, like, was recovering from this surgery, but it was, I was so stressed out that we were gonna like miss drops and pressure was gonna be off and I just wanted her to regain her sight. You know, right. sight is one of those things, I don't think you appreciate it until it's obstructed, right? Yeah. And you don't have it, excuse me. And another thing I was thinking about this week that you don't appreciate until it's gone was air conditioning. Yes, because last week when we were charged, the air conditioning went out and it was ridiculously hot. I was really concerned that maybe like a kid was gonna puke. Because... And a couple of days ago when I went into the church, it still wasn't fixed. Like we were waiting to the last minute because like something had caught on fire and they're waiting for parts. And Yeah, so this weekend was the 10th anniversary of the church, which mm -hmm. was so exciting. And when I stepped in that building and felt air conditioning, I was like, yes, because I was worried. Because I knew there was going to be like a lot of extra kiddos and families. And I didn't want to be like, hey, welcome to the church. And it'd be super duper hot. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, 
the AC was back on. And I heard you had a lot of kids last night, right? Because I I didn't I wasn't there last night. Anthony and I had football games. Yes. So we we did have a lot of kids, but I don't think we even like tip the iceberg of drama like it sounded like you were writing a report last night that was oh my gosh we got to the game and i was so excited because we got on the field like earlier than normal because like they tell us our afternoon games are supposed to start at like 2 30 but we never really get on the field till 3 30. isn't that like a doctor's appointment that if you have a doctor's appointment like you just continually get pushed backward or haircut appointment a lot of times right the, if the morning doesn't go exactly as planned it totally impacts your day too yeah because what happens is is you know well they what they do is they start the first game at like 8 30 in the morning but then it's football so you have like the, the morning kids play like eight minute quarters mm-hmm. but it's stop start so it's like if the ball goes out of bounds you got to stop the clock if if it's an incomplete pass they got to set the clock for like all of you non-football people so what happens is is you don't really know how long the game is going to take if there's a bunch of penalties if somebody gets hurt that kind of stuff so the the on average the little kid games are supposed to take like an hour and a half okay so if you have four games in the morning we should be like on the field by 2 30. i don't think the little kids could stand longer than that we got on the field at three o'clock everything's rolling along the first game is like a blowout. Like we have a running clock by the before the end of the first half of the game. And we started the day where I went up on the clock because my crew rotates like we have five guys on my crew and like everybody spends like a half working the clock. Well, that's nice. You get so, a break. It gets you out of the sun and like away from the field. And there's four guys on the field, one up on the clock. The home team is supposed to supply the chain crew okay and if they don't if there's not a chain crew ready to go when the game starts they get a five-yard penalty and then if we have to keep waiting then it's an unsportsmanlike on the head coach so we started off the game he didn't have a chain crew five-yard penalty now i come down for the second half and we have the same thing no chain crew so we penalize him as five yards we wait we wait Tell the coach, like, hey, you need a chain crew. He doesn't have one. Now he gets a 15-yard penalty, unsportsmanlike on the head coach. Sheesh. So in football, if you get two unsportsmanlikes, you're ejected from the game. The coaches? Anybody. The coach, a player, anything like that. So I go over to the coach, and I'm the crew chief. And I go over to the coach, coach, I need a chain crew. Or you're going to get another unsportsmanlike. And he looks at me, he goes, I'm not making my parents do it. Throw another flag on me. Well, so I'm like, you're going to be ejected. Yeah. And he was like, I don't care. So, okay. Throw the unsportsmanlike. Now the coach is ejected. Now he has to sit out like another week because he's going to get in trouble from the league and they're going to penalize him like at least another week. I think that's always their mandatory is at least one more week. This is bizarre behavior. And the guy who runs the league was like, I'm glad you did it because maybe it'll teach him a lesson. He's like, because like, yeah, that's ridiculous. Like make your parents go like work on the chains and help out. I don't rem. I mean, whenever I was like team mom or or on yeah. a team, I mean, you were always participating in different things. That's odd. So that was the first game. Then the second game, we had an issue with like coaches going nuts, and then we had an issue with a kid who was like taunting, and then he did it again later, and then the coach is yelling at us because he got two unsportsmanlike likes and got ejected. And then our third game was really bad. The bird is like going nuts in there. Probably the cat's bothering her. So our third game was really bad. It almost didn't play. Really? Yeah. So the teams came out. These are 13 and under kids. The teams came out after the coin flip and like ran towards the other team's sideline, like like taunting them, including coaches. Oh my gracious. So like we started off the game with unsportsman likes against the head coach before we ever had a kickoff we, we started off wow and really quickly we noticed that like this is not going to be good like we just had like lots of penalties in the first like in the first few minutes within the first four minutes of the game we've already ejected a player for throwing a punch i've stopped what? the game like three times i called the coaches together and it just con- get, continued to get worse and worse and worse, even though the score was like 24 to nothing by the third quarter. And we ended up having to call the game at the end of the third quarter. We said, we're done. We're done. 
Because every play, there was another flag on somebody. That is insane. I feel like you need to check on her. So while you were at your games, uh -huh. I was at the church with lots of kiddos and families. It was awesome. But there was person after person coming up to me going, hey, we just have hamburgers and hot dogs. No balls. <laughs> and it took me a minute to catch on to what they were saying. I was like, no balls. Why would you need balls? Like, where there's balls, they're playing games over there. And it was like, oh, no, you mean balls because sausage balls. Yeah, because we did a video this week for sausage balls. And I told you when you did that in the video, this was like a really bad idea. And we should just make a new batch and refilm that thing. Because, like, yeah, if you have not seen that video, I will leave a link over Rachel's head. We made sausage balls. balls. And through the entire video, she's just like, balls. Balls. Balls, 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 balls. It kind of reminds me of what you said, like, Caleb did when he met me with the balls. Because balls. instead of going bald, you were just like, balls, balls, balls. So, of course, because there's a bunch of people at our church that watch our videos. Hi, guys. Like, yeah, they're coming and repeating balls to you because awesome. you have the sense of humor of, like, a five-year-old. I know. Well, I would like to think that I've got the maturity of a middle schooler. So we did get some awesome mail this week. Oh, that's right. Can I share? Somebody else sent us an ornament. I'm so excited. So this is from Allison in Illinois. Thank you, Miss Allison. She actually also, in addition to an ornament, sent us a, a cat thing that her family had used to try to keep the cats. It like it bursts like a gust of air out yeah. to just kind of like make the cats not want to be around the tree. Yeah. Hopefully this will work. I'm not thinking about the cats. I'm to me wondering, will it work on a hundred pound dog? Probably not. I but. need to just set up the vacuum cleaner <laughs> just going because she's really frightened of the vacuum cleaner for I some know. reason. Not like she's ever been sucked up by it. Right. But anyway, so, um, so Allison um, said, let's see. She goes, I'm praying the ornaments made it in one piece, one for each of you. Let you guys decide which one you think is for who. <laughs> I had such a good time picking them out. Since I started watching your videos and following you on Facebook, I feel like I know your personalities just a little. Well, thank you. Thanks for everything you do. You are both an inspiration for me. And it said, take care, Allison. And so this is from Allison in Illinois. Thank you, Allison. So let me show the first one and see if you can decide, is this for me or is this for you? The first one is an ornament that says... Touchdown. Touchdown. Oh, I didn't even realize she actually it, wrote on the back. It says to Joe, obviously, because <laughs> Rachel doesn't know what end of the footballs to hold. But it says, to Joe from Allison, Merry Christmas. This is so that is awesome. cute. Thank I you very love much. it. Thank you, Allison. All right, so that one that means that this one is for me. And look what it is. That is so cool. It's a cup of coffee. It is so adorable. I love this. Allison, thank you. I actually just you. noticed, like, look at this little piece. So it's just like a Starbucks cup with those little plastic things that you used to love. I love this because, like, it's... It's so ingenious, right? You stick this thing in and it keeps it hot. Yeah. Because I don't like it when the coffee goes cold. I will actually put it in the microwave and heat it up. So this keeps it like as warm as for as long as possible. So thank you so much, Allison. And we will make sure that everybody gets to see this because we are voting to see who is the top one. Yeah, ornament. which one it wins at the end. So yeah, if, so if you're new to our channel, we're doing something a little different with our Christmas tree. We're talking about like, what should we do for our Christmas tree decorating? Because Rachel always does a theme. So this year we're doing a subscriber Christmas tree and we are only going to put on ornaments if anybody sends us ornaments. So make an ornament like, out of popsicles. Our address is down in the uh, description. You can send us just like a drawn picture. Yep. It's going on the tree. And that would be just awesome. And you can send that to us. And whatever ornaments people send us is what we're going to make our Christmas tree out of. And then we're going to actually pick our favorite ones. Like when we get closer to Christmas, obviously, it's only the middle of September right now. What if they send us Christmas balls? <laughs> <laughs> They're going up. So we're going to pick our favorite ones and then have you guys vote on what the best one is and the one that has the most amount of votes, like maybe that reflects our personalities or something like that. Then we will send well, a prize. Well, uh, win, win a box. Yeah. So, um, I, you know what I got? 
thinking about boxes, we pulled this out of like one of our keto crates oh. and we had gotten it two months in a row. One yeah. in, I think in a keto crate and one in a keto box. The IQ bar. The IQ bar. And I wanted to try this. It could use something. Something, so, something. Um, this is basically a meal bar and it says it's got brain nutrients, plant protein, total sugars, four total net carbs. It's the IQ brain bar. The lemon blueberry flavor. One bar is 170 calories, 10 grams of fat, 11 grams of protein, 17 total carbohydrates, which is kind of high. That's kind of high. Nine grams of uh, fiber, and then it must have, it doesn't say, oh, allulose, four grams of sugar of allulose, so it's four net there carbs. There you go. You want to try this? Yes, I do. How does it smell? It smells like lemon blueberry. Yes, it does. Like a lemon poppy seed. That's nice. That's what it looks like. What are the ingredients? Should we read oh, those? The ingredients are almonds, soluble tapioca fiber, pea protein, allulose, protein crisp, which is pea protein, pea starch, and rice flour, gum acacia, flax seeds, water, dried blueberries, coconut like oil, that. sunflower lecithin, sea salt, natural flavors, dried lemon. Stevia plant extract and lion's mane extract. Good ingredients. And, and vitamin E. So it's good ingredients. You know, I love that it's got dried blueberries instead of it being like chemicals to pretend like it's a blueberry. All right. You want to dink it? Dink. It's chewy. Not for me. Hmm. It's kind of got the chew of almost like a, a dang bar, but it's chewier. Dang! But that, cr like, it's got like the little kind of granola crunch, probably like the pea protein crisps and Here's stuff. Here's the weird thing. I'm not tasting lemon or blueberries. Are you? Yeah. I taste the lemon. I taste the blueberry. Um, Not for me. I'm really not tasting it. I, I taste the after effect of a lemon, but I don't taste blueberries at all. It, and it's not sweet. It's not sweet. It's not for me. It's not horrible. It's not It's not worth 17 total carbs for me. That's my thing. Hmm. It's not bad. I don't like the texture. It's, very, it's like... It's a weird texture. It's a strangely chewy. Yeah, it's strangely chewy. It's like chewy, but... There's like a crunch in there that doesn't seem like it belongs. Like, is there hemp seeds in that? No, it's like flax seeds. But what it is is see how like it's see how it's like kind of like bendy. So it's almost like a Quest bar kind of bendy. But then when you bite into it, there's like seeds, like nuts. Well, that's what it is. There's also almonds in there. Oh, okay. So yeah, it's like a cross between uh, I don't know, like a Quest bar and a granola bar. Does that make sense? Like. Texture wise, it's it's got good ingredients, but um, it's got good ingredients, but it's not for me. What I can't wrap my mind around is that I don't taste lemon and I don't taste blueberry. Something's wrong with your taste buds. No, I, I definitely good. taste lemon and blueberry, but it's not like overwhelming. But I don't know. Oh well, it's all right. I don't have to like every single bar I like. All right, I try. You try. You yeah. don't have to like all the bars you like. No, I don't have to like all the bars I try. So do you want to do comments? Sure, let's do comments. Um, we don't really have a subscriber of the week this week. Right, bro. Yeah, they, I didn't see anybody's story in the Facebook family group when I was looking. So I'm, if you do have one there, I'm sorry if I missed it. But normally what we do is we do a subscriber of the week where we just go into our Facebook family group and pick out somebody who has shared their story because your story you know, may impact somebody else because maybe there's somebody out there who's got a similar situation and they can relate to what you've gone through. So yeah. we ask you guys to, you know, please share your story in there. Yeah, one of the things like last year, I think we had like a meeting with like our Coastal Kids volunteers and I passed out keys because sometimes it's good to remember that you are a unique key that can unlock some truth in somebody's life. You know, I mean, I may try to reach people, but I may not be the key. Like right. I may not have the key that unlocks their door, but you know, somebody may be hurting in a very specific and unique way. Right. And man, like you plug in your story, you share your experience and, and it just speaks to them. That's right. So you that's know? why we encourage you guys to please share your stories, put up pictures, 
you know, struggles that you're having because, you know, it might be something somebody else is going with, going through, and you're encouraging them. Or you could have the other situation where somebody else would be like, hey, I went through that. Let me help you go along more. Sometimes it's hard to be vulnerable. That's right. However, I mean, and and sometimes even for myself, like when we did that, um, like full day of eating blog, and I had to just come out and say like, I'm struggling with gum. I have a hard time. I use it as a crutch and it like, it gets on my nerves and I think, why am I even sharing this? Like this probably doesn't affect anybody else. Probably nobody else is struggling with this. Well, there are actually a bunch of people who left comments about that. Really? Yeah. We are gonna try to do more of those full day of eating vlogs. I mean, it seems like you guys like really like that. Let us know down in the comment section if you want us to do more. We're gonna try to do at least, I think one a week, right? Well, uh, am I gonna get a heads up that they're coming? <laughs> So I can put some makeup on and run a comb through my hair? We're not always going to start them off just in bed or something. I just thought it would be different because the last time we did that, which was when we were in Texas, everybody really liked that. I think I was cuter then. No. you're. I've aged since then. No. You always look awesome. I love you. <laughs> but yeah, so we really enjoyed doing that. But it just a heads up. A lot of times our food is kind of boring. We don't do a lot of like really extravagant recipes. A lot of times it's eggs, bacon, ground beef, maybe some keto chow or keto brick mixed in. So there's not a lot of duck a la range. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to get into these comments? Yes. First one is Gary. Hey, Gary. And Gary wrote, uh, Rachel, you have a great voice. Every time you sing, it's very good. Thank you very much. <laughs> You do have an awesome voice. Not I love really. when you sing. But I thank you, Gary. You're like very encouraging. Uh, a pal wrote. A pal. I seriously laughed out loud at your Mickey Mouse. I love you both because you are so human. Thank you, Rachel, for making me laugh so hard. I needed that today. Aww. Okay, stop. We got to pause the video. You've got to go get your Mickey Mouse and Anthony's Mickey Mouse. We'll be right back. Okay. Okay. So here is Rachel's that you saw in the video the other day. And I actually think he looks kind of cute. He looks like Mickey Mouse. For Hannibal Lecter. Except for like the white stitching around his face. And then when you look on the back, I don't know what that's supposed to be. He also, <laughs> he's had some brain surgery. He looks like Frankenstein. He also has no hands and he has no legs. So Rachel like did this one and she felt pretty good about herself. I mean, she did finish the craft until sort of. Anthony came in with her, with his. And Anthony walks in, and here's Anthony's. It is per... Oh, my goodness. I just bumped his... I broke Anthony it. Anthony even put together the little stand that he's supposed to be sit sitting on. He and turned the he box... He turned Look the, at this. the craft box into, into a chair. chair. So here's Rachel's, and here's Anthony's. <laughs> one of these things are not like the other one. I want to know, like, why is Anthony's, look how nice and stuffed Anthony's is, and then look at yours. Well, here's the- Yours is like a flat finger puppet. Well, what happened was, is I sewed the butt wrong. I sewed his butt closed. He has no butt. Oh, he, yeah. See? See? Like, here's, here's Anthony's. Yeah, this is- Here's Rachel's. Mine, and this is Anthony's. He has a butt. <laughs> And he has no butt on mine. Hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna just. What claim about this. his face? Like his. This one is like well, deflated. He, well, he. I know he stuffed it properly. He got it into a circle where where mine is like a heart. <laughs> look at that. Like like. Okay, this is mine, and this is his. And look at that. His is like a stuffed animal. I'm actually looking at the ears now, and like, look at this nice piece here. Like, what is this? Oh, I did it upside down. <laughs> Oh, that's what you did wrong. Yes. Among other things. This is supposed to be down here, like making it. <laughs> so I, let me just say. You need to go buy a new one of these. I know. So I am an uber nerd, right? <laughs> like I was Miss Goody Goody in school. In all of the three years of middle school, there I only got one B. And guess what it was? Home ec. <laughs> I wonder why. Because I stink at sewing. It was awful. Look at this. So cute. Are you ready now? I'm supposed to be better at this than my child. <laughs> I got news for you. He's also better at cooking. More well, than me. He, he's almost better at cooking than me sometimes. He's, he's definitely he's getting really getting good close. at cooking. 
I'm trying to get him to come on a video and do a video because he makes like really good biscuits and gravy for keto. Yeah, keto biscuits and gravy. It's awesome. So Jen wrote. Hey, Jen. Aw, Rachel, I love your message at the 58 minute mark to my. You two are so encouraging and supportive. I came back to listen to this part again and again. Aw, thanks, Jen. Oh, my goodness. That, that means a lot to me. So Jan wrote, Hey Jan. Gum helps me not eat snacks. It takes the hunger away and the anxiety too. Yes. Oh my goodness. I am so glad that I am not alone in this. I struggle with gum. Cheryl wrote, Hey Cheryl. Rachel, I chew gum all throughout my day at school. I don't want to offend anyone with my coffee breath. Aww. I only have my to-go coffee in the morning, but I'm always conscious of how my breath smells. I know it's ridiculous, but that's me. I don't think it's ridiculous at all. It's definitely something that I'm thinking about, especially when you're like always in close contact with people like I am. Um, I actually had a little kid yesterday said, Miss Rachel, are you worried about your breath? You're always chewing gum. And, and I was like, oh, well, I do worry about my breath, yes. And, and he said, does it help? And I was like, well, I don't know. Does it? And he was like, yes, it, it smells very minty. So, hey, it's working. Linda wrote. Hey, Linda. It was hard for me to quit gum. I was chewing two packs a day. It was a stress reliever, but not a healthy one. It's been at least two years since my last piece. What a coincidence that I had cream spinach tonight for dinner. Oh my gracious. Okay, so we're the same person, clearly. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I want to kick it. And it sounds like we're talking about cigarettes, right? Like it's got that much of a hold on me. Right. But I'm like, I really have a trouble with it. Like I also have trouble with biting my nails. And there's been a million times that I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop doing this. But it is, it's it's a, a stress reliever and definitely the gum. Now I do want to say, it's not that gum is horrible on keto. It's just, you have to be careful because most of the gums that are like sugar-free are going to be sweetened with xylitol. And xylitol, I mean, there is total carbs in it. And especially if you're following a total carb protocol, usually each piece is like one to two carbs. <laughs> and then xylitol does have a little bit of an insulin effect. There does, it, it is like, I think 13 or something like that on the glycemic index. So it's not like using stevia or something like that. So, you know, it's okay to chew gum, just you don't want to go overboard on chewing gum. <laughs> I'm overboard, I'm I'm in the rowboat, and I'm heading toward land. That's how overboard I am with the gum. So I'm actually working on something. I, I don't know how successful it's gonna be. It's a Christmas present for me though, it's, isn't it? <laughs> sort of. Actually, I think it would be great because what I'm trying to figure out is I know how to make chewing gum at home. Like make your own. But like I said, how? all of the chewing gums that I have found like that you can buy in the store that I've bought for you, either A, the flavor goes away like within three bites. Fruit stripes gum. Kind of reminds you of fruit, or chiclets. Remember chiclets? Yeah, it's like, oh, oh no, it's gone. <laughs> it's over. But, you know, number one, they're expensive. Like most of the keto friendly gums, they're yeah. expensive. They're with xylitol and you don't really want the xylitol. So I'm trying to figure out how to make my own gum at home that would be sweetened with monk fruit extract, or stevia, or a combination of both of them. Please make this happen. The The problem is, is the, the way I know how to make gum, you would have to use a powdered form of sweetener, which would go back to like powdered erythritol, which now brings you back to carbohydrates. Dang it. So I'm working on it. So once we figure it out, we'll make a video on it. And I will chew it. Lots of it. <laughs> I would like to be the test subject for this. And me, I am not a gum chewer. Not because I don't want to be, because I really do want to be. I love gum. But because I have partial dentures and it just sticks to my dentures. Okay, so I have a giant mouth. Like, <laughs> giant. And so I can fit a lot of sticks of gum in there, too. My mom can only chew like a small chiclet. Yeah. Like she has this tiniest little fish mouth. Like it's so tiny. I don't know where I got this. I guess my dad, but I don't think anybody has as big of a mouth as me. Um, no comment. So Rachel wrote. Hey Rachel. I'd be down for a live cook keto with me on the first Sunday of every month. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, we are, we're still thinking about, I think it might start off on Sundays. I. Sundays are going to be difficult because we're launching another service soon. 
Yeah. So I don't know how easy it's going to be to do on Sunday. So Sunday, I think, would be the best day for everybody to join us. Yeah. Maybe at like 5 or 6 o'clock or something like that. But we're going we're gonna to see how it goes. We'll let you guys know as soon as we figure out what day we're going to do it. Be kind. I might look like a hot mess. What we'll probably do is give you at least a week's notice on Keto on the Couch so you can all be ready to tune yeah, in. Yeah, yay. We could be together. Uh, Becky wrote, Hey, Becky. A live stream once a month sounds fantastic. Yep. I want to do that. It's going to be fun. Uh, Cindy wrote. Hey, Cindy. Or Cindy Dez wrote. Hey, Cindy Dez. I'd like to cut my straw to fit. Rachel, yours is super long. I sure do enjoy your videos, guys. I need to go back and binge watch from the beginning. What do you think about natural flavors? Are they a bad thing? Most keto experts think it's bad. I always get a kick out of natural flavors, obviously. <laughs> like, usually I can't even not make a face when we read it on the ingredients list. Because some of the things, like when we did the pickle juice review, what is the natural flavor of pickles? Do you, I mean, do you find pickles like hanging on trees someplace, like all dilled up and ready to go? So, um, but natural flavors a lot of times have some hidden stuff. They can hide some stuff in natural flavors. So I'm always a little bit leery of them. We do have a friend whose mother found out uh, that she has like, kind of like a celiac situation. And um, they advised her to avoid anything with natural flavors because she has an allergy to what nightshades. Yeah. And a lot of times there can be some nightshades hidden in that natural flavors thing. But yeah, I always wonder what is natural flavors like? What are they putting in that? Here's my thing on natural flavors. So there's very little that is natural about natural flavors. Natural flavors are pretty much, they're made in the lab, mm -hmm. okay? They're just flavorings that they put together with some chemicals to come up with that flavor. Um, they're in a lot of products. I don't bother avoiding them because they're in almost everything. If I have an option of like, hey, you can have this chicken broth with natural flavors and this chicken broth without natural flavors, I'm gonna choose the one without. But like for example, Zevia has natural flavors in it. My my feeling is this, I'm drinking Zevia instead of Diet Coke. Let's look at the list of ingredients that are on a Zevia and let's look at the list of ingredients that are on a Diet Coke. So are they the greatest thing in the world? Probably not, but to me it's the lesser of two evils. Um, I always tend to err on the side of caution with carbohydrates with natural flavors. And if it says it's zero carb, figure it's got at least a half a carb. And like, again, like we said on the video the other day that I always like to just round up. Even if my heavy cream says it's zero carbs, I know that there's about a half a carb per serving of, of heavy cream. So I round up and I do the same thing with natural flavors. But we don't want to like drive ourselves crazy. I mean, yep. you just kind of do your best and let God handle the rest. It's like, you know, you hear people say to me things like, well, that's going to cause cancer. Well, honestly, everything in our environment causes cancer. I mean, they're working on things like where you could walk into the room and there's a thing in the ceiling that charges your cell phone. So you don't even have to plug it in or put it on a charging pad. Like as soon as you walk into the room, it's going to just wirelessly charge through the air. That's got to impact us in some you way. You know, that and Wi-Fi and everything else. So I figure, like, I can't avoid every single thing Still in gotta the world. Still got to live. So I, natural flavors for me, if, if I can have it without it, great, but I'm not going to not eat it if it does have natural flavors. My thing is, every once in a while though, I question it. Yeah. And if it seems like, mm, I don't think I need something extra in here, then I, yeah. I might Yeah, but that's it. why, like, in all our review videos on products and stuff, Rachel's always like, natural flavors, you know? Because, again, there's nothing natural about natural flavors, for the most part. Yeah. It's like Victoria's Secret's bra. <laughs> we know what the secret is. It's an underwire and lots of padding. Secret's out. So Shanta wrote... Hey, Shanta. I have seen that I can go the longest on a fast when I drink a bottle of water with apple cider vinegar and salt in it. It helps push me longer. Ooh, I like that. Yes, apple cider vinegar will not break your fast. Uh, you can even add a little bit of lemon juice and some stevia in there, and that'll keep you going on your fast, and that really is a big help. Yeah. So September wrote... Hey, September. I tried fasting 16 to 18 hours. I was able to do it pretty easily, but I found that when I did, I would just want to snack and munch on everything for the rest of the night after breaking my fast and would be less satisfied with my dinner. 
So for now, I eat breakfast, I have a cup of coffee in the morning, and I'm content until dinner with little desire to snack. That's awesome. That is really awesome. Also, when I was fasting, I stalled. Now that I'm not, my weight is steadily going down again. Man, it, you know, different things work for different people. My thing is, if I feel angry or deprived about a situation and and I can I can be like totally on board with fasting until it feels like it is a chore. Right. Then I will rebel against it and I will sneak eat and I will add stuff that I don't need or I will like binge on things, you know, when my eating window is open. So that's not helpful. Um sometimes I do great with breakfast and lunch and dinner. You know, so it just all depends. I think for me to be happiest, I need to be changing it up on the regular. If I get bored or I, I feel like put upon, then I will sabotage myself. It's the craziest thing ever, but it's just a fact. Like if I'm, I feel like I'm imprisoned by these um, like dieting constraints, then I will rebel against it. It's I've got to feel like, I'm making choices for myself and I'm not deprived. And I'm the same way because like I will have no problem. I can easily go 22, 23, 24 hours without eating till I start thinking about it, which yeah. is why I've kind of shifted to like when I am going to fast, it's just going to be a spur of the moment thing because I could be fine, not hungry at all, be sitting at my computer at eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night and I'm completely fine. And then I start thinking like, ugh. I really wish I could eat something and I can't eat anything because like I'm, my fasting window is started and my eating window is closed. And the next thing I know, like I'm like grabbing a little bite of something here and a little bite of something there. And the worst part is, is like when I say a little bite, I'm talking about like one nut, just like one thing to put in my mouth, like something that's less than five calories. And you think like, oh, five calories, that's nothing. It doesn't matter. If it's, a, if it's one calorie, you just broke your fast. You've just spiked your insulin. Whether you have five calories or 500 calories, spiking the insulin is spiking the insulin. And I sabotage myself. But if I don't think about it, I'm fine. It's yeah. as soon as I start thinking about it and I'm like, punish, I feel like I'm thinking about it. And because I'm thinking about it, I feel like I'm punished. Right. And so now I want to sabotage my punishment. It's, it's bizarre, but yeah, it has to be on my terms. Right. So, um, a couple weeks ago we talked about like, I had done a 24 hour fast. I chose it. I decided let's do this. And it was no problem. Right. I felt no deprivation. I felt like I wasn't being put in a timeout. <laughs> I, I felt good about it. And you ended it when you wanted it. You didn't go into the fast going, this is going to be a 24 hour fast no. or this is going to, you're just like, I'm going to fast until I'm like ready to eat. And it turned out to be 24 hours. Yeah. As opposed to in the past when we've done like 48 or 48 hour fast or 72 hour fast, those last few hours, you start going, how much longer? Yeah. Right? Oh, I'm almost there. Like, oh, you know, I'm only going to break it an hour early instead of just saying, you know, like, you know what? I'm ready to eat now. I need to somehow flip the switch that instead of having the mentality that doing the wrong thing is my choice, I need to be thinking more of like doing the right thing is my choice. Right. I'm in charge of that. Right. Now, as far as you, September, I would say that, yeah. What you're doing is awesome. Even if you're having breakfast and then dinner, you're still having, so you're, you may not have a long fasting window between dinner and breakfast, but it's still a, a closed eating window. And then you have that one between breakfast and dinner. The key is you're not spiking insulin all that other time of the Four day. Four or five times a day. You're only spiking it two times during breakfast and dinner. So if that's what it takes. Don't worry about that you didn't go 16 hours. If you only went 10 or 12 hours, that's fine. But if you go 10 or 12 hours, you eat, and then you go 10 or 12 hours, you know, you're doing you're awesome. Rocking. Because it means you're not spiking insulin twice a day for 10 to 12 hours. You're amazing. Yeah, so I would not worry about it. And that's probably why, like, you're not stalled anymore. Because when you were snacking throughout your eating window, the entire time that you're eating, you can't be burning fat because you can't burn fat in the presence of insulin. It's 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 kind of like this. If one's going up, the other one's going down. It's just how insulin works with fat burning. Well, insulin's a jerk. 
A vet wrote, Hey vet. If you only eat once a day, are you supposed to eat all your calories in that meal? Yes. So if you're doing OMAD, you want to consume all of your calories for the day in that meal. Now that meal doesn't have to be like, I'm going to sit down and eat everything in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. It could be an hour long, an hour and a half long. It's what is your eating window? When we've done OMAD, we generally do like a 23-1. So we're going to like fast for 23 hours and then we're going to have about an hour eating window. I love those days. Because what I found for myself at least, if I tried to consume all 2,000 of my calories in like 30 minutes, I could do it, but then I'm sick. And then I will, I've actually gotten to a point where like, it's now like stuff in my esophagus and now I'm like, I want to throw up, but I can't throw up. Or like, if I know if I do get sick from it, now what do I do? Because I've just lost all my calories and that's going to like be bad for me. So yeah, stretch it out. If you can't eat all of your calories in like one sitting, just take an hour or two hours to do it. I can eat all my calories and his calories in 10 minutes. <laughs> Top that. But you definitely want to consume all your calories. And that is one of the dangers with OMAD is that you can end up under consuming calories, which will then screw up your metabolism. Not a problem for me. <laughs> Gail wrote. Hey Gail. No, Rachel. I was thinking before you said anything about your hair or your face that you look so pretty and I loved the hair. Aww. I'm so excited. I ordered my first keto bricks yesterday. One cookies and cream and one peanut butter. Awesome. I have to go back and watch the video where you melted them down to make pucks. I will leave that like right over Rachel's head. Uh, the live stream sounds great whenever you do it. And what about Saturdays? Saturdays would probably be a difficult day because we would want to do like a, a cook along kind of video and we have two services on Saturday. So Rachel has to be at church usually by like 1.30, 2 o'clock. And if I'm not doing games, I'd be You're getting there, there about the same time and we're not getting home until like 9 o'clock at night. So it'd have to be a breakfast instead of dinner. Yeah. And then even then we're trying to find when we could do it consistently and since I do sports at least half the year Sometimes and almost always on Saturdays. Yeah. Slapstick food keto edition. How cool is that? Do you all think the peanut butter bricks are as salty as the other ones? I saw AD Keto's Sunday video and he mentioned it wasn't as salty as the other ones. The amount of salt is what made it hard for me to eat the mocha and the cookies and cream ones. I ordered a peanut butter one, but just one. I'm super excited to try it. I just hope it's not a salty. Robert said I probably just have not been keto long enough to want that much salt, which is true. I'm about six weeks now, and I do believe this diet gave me my life back. Aww. But I've never been a big salt person, so I'm super excited about this. Okay, so yeah, the keto bricks are a little salty. I do think that this peanut butter one is not as salty. It's not as salty, but here's the thing. We melt them down. Yeah. And I have found that when you melt them down, if you're like us and you like to melt them down, as you're pouring them into your molds, continue to stir them. Okay. Like your, your melted down batter. Because what happened, and this is with any flavor, but what happens is if you don't, I find sometimes like some of the salt will set up to the bottom. Oh. So if like we melted down, one brick will make eight pucks for us. So the first four or five or six will have like one taste and then the last couple that I pour maybe a little bit more salty because the salt is kind of settled to the bottom. So what I've learned to do is kind of keep stirring it as I pour it in to make sure like all of the ingredients are well incorporated and well mixed. Man, I could live with a salt lick. <laughs> I don't know what it would be like to be like, this is too salty. I do, but I did want to say, like, yeah, the, the keto bricks are a little salty. They're designed to be salty because they're designed to give you all of the salt you need. And I'm with you. I was not a salt person pre-keto. Rachel was a huge salt person. She would put, like, but again, then we were using the iodized salt. Oh, like, it's so just bad. Table salt. But you would literally, like, lift up her plate and there would be a ring on the table, like, where her salt was. She used so much salt. You know what is an interesting dynamic, though? Like, since we've been on keto and I'm not using that that bad salt anymore, um, I don't need as much salt as I used to. Right. Um, one thing with that, the regular table salt, it's like you're, um, you had to always be like upping the ante on right. the salt in order for me to taste it. feels like it was like dulling my palate with salt. And now that we use the Redmond Real Salt, or even when we were using the pink Himalayan salt, right. didn't need as much. Yeah. 
But I was not a salt person like Rachel was. At all. And now I am. I mean, when I say I wasn't a salt person, I didn't even cook with salt. I bought unsalted butter. I kind of grew up in a house again because of the house that I grew up in, like buy everything fat free. I had a, uh, my father had had a heart attack, so we really did not cook with salt. And so that's kind of how I was. And I never salted my food. And now I love salt. I crave salt. So the longer you're on keto, the more you're going to crave salt, which is actually a good thing because yeah. your body needs the sodium. You need like a lot more sodium when you're on keto than when you're not. But just make sure you got the good salt. Yeah. So if you're finding that food is too salty and probably because you just haven't been doing keto long, long enough. But the more you do keto, the more you're going to want salt. I mean, the amount of salt we go through now is, like, ridiculous. We buy it by the paint bucket. Yes. So Diane wrote... Hey, Diane. Audible books are great when you're driving. Yes, they are. They're also great when you're cleaning the house. And they are great when you are riding your bicycle. I love them. I love Audible books. My thing with Audible books, though, is I want to hear the author as the narrator. Oh, yeah. I can't stand it when you get an audible book and it wasn't the author narrating it and it's like you just don't get the same like i don't know feeling of the book right no sometimes they get kind of like lazy and you're and you're like introduction by the author right and then the rest of it by like Rachel. You just I don't know. For me, I just feel like I'm really getting the true meaning of the book when I hear the author saying it. And that could be any it could be a regular book, you know, it could be like a keto book. It could be like, you know, I listen I look down like I love reading Joyce Meyer books. Yes. But I get the audible books because I don't want to sit at home and read. I never have time to just sit and read. I want to listen to it like when I'm working. But I will only pick out the books that I, she's narrating because I feel like I get more out of it if I hear her than just some random person do telling you, the story. Because a lot of her books are personal stories, do right? Do you guys remember um, the Seinfeld episode where George Costanza is trying to learn like risk management at, at work? And so he orders the Audible book because the, the book he has to read is like huge. And the Audible book is like his voice. It's so much like his voice that he can't pay attention to it because it's, like, annoying. I don't know if I remember that episode. Oh, my gosh. It's so funny. I love that episode. Yeah. I just I just need to hear the author. I still I still remind, remember this one. I was It was um, a biography or an autobiography by a comedian. Okay. And I was, like, he started the Audible book, and then he started having other people doing the other chapters. And I'm like, this is, like, your story. I don't want to hear your story from somebody us. else. Yeah. Uh, Tara Simpson wrote. Hey, Tara. I love Audible. I spend so much time in my car, and Audible is a game changer. My company has a large library of books that they offer for free on Audible. Wow. You're lucky. I also started listening to podcasts to help break up my day. Yes, I, I love podcasts. We do listen to a lot of podcasts. I That is so cool that you're... Your job has like yeah, a library. Yeah, I listen of this. to a lot of podcasts because sometimes the Audible books are expensive. Yeah. You know what else I love to listen to in the car is the Adventures in Odyssey series. It was like, it's like a radio show from Focus on the Family. Right. But it is so interesting because I don't know. It's like they have good sound effects, the voices are amazing. It's just fun. I know I'm too old for this, but I love it. Like I said last week, for me, what's just nice about Audible books, podcasts, or something like that is when you're doing something that's just like kind of mindless, like driving. I guess driving shouldn't really be mindless. Yeah, right? no, you should, but, you should focus on like that. But like me sitting on a lawnmower or you doing laundry or something like that, right? You can kind of occupy your mind with something other than just like this motion of folding laundry or whatever it may yeah. be. Joe's friend wrote, Hey, Joe's I friend. I just love the encouragement and acceptance you all provide. I'm so glad I finally found your channel, and I can't wait to see more good things from you and for you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank well, you. I, I'm glad, and I'm glad that you're Joe's friend. Get it? You're Joe's friend. It's the last one. Ubriel wrote, Hey, Ubriel. I see great info from you guys. Consistently well-informed good stuff. The best thing you guys provide, in my opinion, is the encouragement, acceptance, and kindness. Even when we forget to be kind to ourselves. With sincerity, thank you. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you, Ubriel. Yes, thank you. And I think one of the reasons we always are, have that kind of an attitude is because a lot of times we're not kind to ourselves in ourselves, right? Yeah. I mean, 
Rachel and I are always kind of beating ourselves up like, I didn't do this right, I didn't do that right. Not like me telling her she did it wrong, but me telling myself I did it wrong. And same here. And we beat each other up or beat ourselves up so often. And I know I'm blessed at like have Rachel who's always kind of like lifting me back up like, no, 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 that was a great job. You did awesome. And for the most part, Usually, like, one of us will be up and one of us will be down, and it's rare that we're both down at the same time. And that's why we're always, like, pointing people back to that Facebook family group because you may be having a bad day, but there's somebody that's that's got the energy and they're having a good day, and they can lift you up, and then when you're having a good day, then return the favor, get in there, and encourage somebody that may be having a bad day because, man, it's... It's a daily battle, right? It's a daily battle to be kind to ourselves. I was talking to kids this weekend, asking them, what can I be praying for you about this this coming week? And I would say nine out of 10 kids were saying, could you just pray for, for my thoughts and how I feel about myself? Sometimes I'm really hard on myself. Sometimes I'm facing a test or I'm facing a sporting event. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not going to be any good today. I'm not going to be able to make my goals. And I thought, man, you know, elementary kids and middle school kids, you've got to practice being kind to yourself and having good thoughts that you will be a success. God's got good plans for you. And and you can do this. You've got strength. So sometimes it's just a matter of surrounding yourself with people who are just going to edify you and cheer you on. And we just feel so privileged to be able to be a cheerleader in your life. And we really thank you for the cheering that you do for us. And there's plenty of time, believe me, where you guys, especially in our Facebook group, encourage us because like i said most of the time one of us will be up or and one of us will be down it's rare that we're both down but every once in a while yeah we're both down at the same time we're both like up on weight or both struggling like rachel's struggling with gum and i'm struggling with like eating constantly throughout the day and we are able to go into that facebook family group and you guys lift us up a lot of times just for being there yeah. just because we're like yes that's why we're doing this yes this is why i stay on this lifestyle because bottom line is it's hard enough to be like eating a keto lifestyle when we're surrounded by so many people who are eating the standard American diet and saying that fat is bad and saying that like, you know, it's fine to eat like lots of extra sugars and, and fruits and stuff like that. So yeah. it's important to be there to encourage each other. And, and so thank you for that comment. And this is like the last, I guess, uh, Keto on the Couch for September. Yeah. And while we've kind of reflected on less stress September, I have to say the encouragement that you provide, that's a natural stress reliever, right? It's just feeling like you are not alone. You are not on an island by yourself. You know, if, if you've been either you're just starting this diet and you're struggling with it, or you've been on it for a long time, like we have, and you're thinking, boy, I should have a handle on all this by now. You're not perfect. Yeah. And, you know, just having other people cheering for you and in your corner, it it makes all the difference and it really reduces that stress and helps you to put things back in perspective. So thanks, guys. Well, that is this week's Keto on the Couch. Please do us a favor and leave some questions and comments that you may have for us down in the comment section below and we will answer them on next week's Keto on the Couch. Yes. Um, Also, please go and join our Facebook family group again to not only be encouraged by other people, but to be an encourager for other people. You can put up recipes, your stories, uh, just like product finds that you've tried or things you've seen in the stores. If you have questions like, hey, what do you think of this ingredient or this product? That's what everybody isn't there for. Uh, We try to get in there as much as possible. But we're glad that like when we can't be in there, there are awesome people in there that can answer your questions and stuff as well. Way cooler than us. Way cooler than us. So uh, that is our video for today. Uh, Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.